Hey guys, this is Ricky Carmen, and this is our adventure through Vietnam. We made our plans to drive the length of Vietnam two days before we arrived. We didn't realize that the road from Ho Chi Minh City to Hanoi was going to be over 2,000 kilometers and over 30 hours on the road. We also didn't realize that most of the highways are not accessible to motorcycles, which ended up putting an extra 20 hours on our trip. The size of Ho Chi Minh City blew us away. It was busy and brightly lit with every color neon light you could imagine. We stayed in the backpackers district in Pham Nu Lao and got hit on by a hooker within 15 minutes. She was actually pretty cute and she offered services for like $15, but it probably came with a side of STDs, so that was an offer we turned down. We bought a motorcycle from a man on a street corner and made our first huge mistake. We didn't haggle on the price at all. And when we asked if the bike had paperwork, he laughed and said, of course it does. But then he never gave us the paperwork. It meant that our bike was practically worthless when we went to sell it. And like a piece of bread and it is what, one tenth? One tenth of the bike. It also meant that we were riding a stolen bike the entire journey. We were lucky not to get pulled over. Our first stops on the trip were the waterfalls in the south of Vietnam. They were beautiful and not as touristy as the waterfalls we were used to in Bali. As a photographer, I felt like I was able to capture unique perspectives that no one online had ever seen before. I had this idea in my mind that we would be riding through lush jungle this entire trip. That was not the case. There was a strip of grey commercial buildings on either side of us the entire highway. It was only when we cut over to the coast that we finally reached a stretch of road that cut through a rainforest. Besides the birds and cicadas, that road was completely silent. The first major city we encountered was Dalat, nestled in the hills. We left all of our jackets in Bali and made an adventure of finding new ones at the night market. We spent my birthday in Dalat off-roading in a forest. We were searching for a photo spot that we found out was only accessible by boat. The next day as we were driving, we discovered our fuel gauge was broken. And at one point, when we were out in the mountains, searching for the tallest peak in Vietnam, we sputtered to a stop halfway up the mountain. We were forced to roll the bike back to the nearest shack. No one spoke English, so I had to mime out my bike sputtering out of gas. At that point, we realized that we'd run out of Vietnamese dong. So we tried to give her US dollars instead. She took it, but she got skeptical. She tried stepping on the money, holding it over a lighter, tearing it, anything she could do to try and authenticate it. Eventually, she just decided to trust us and sent her son with an empty Coke bottle to go get us fuel. After that ordeal, we discovered that the mountain we'd been searching for, the tallest mountain in Vietnam, was completely covered in clouds. Even if we did do the hike, we wouldn't have a view at all. And the trail turned out to be an unofficial path, barely visible through the jungle. So we opted out. We read online about an abandoned water park that you could bribe your way into. The guard wouldn't accept our bribe though, so we ended up parking a ways away and having to walk through a village. We were having a great time and we took some incredible shots until the guard saw us and chased us away. It sounds like we were the only people they chased out, but in fact, there was about 20 other people there too. The entire trip, we were amazed by the food we found in Vietnam. Even at the truck stops, we found the most vibrant, flavorful food we'd ever had. Some of the meals were only 70 cents per person. Even at the nicest vegan restaurant we went to in Hanoi, it only cost $9 for both of us. In fact, everything in Vietnam was cheap. It was about half the price of Bali. Six gigabytes of data for your phone cost about $7. $8 rooms were luxurious, sometimes with 18-foot ceilings or ocean views. The only thing that a lot of the rooms lacked at any price point was hot water. Language is also definitely a barrier in the rural parts of Vietnam. Even on Google Translate, we weren't able to communicate well. We learned to choose words that could only have one meaning, like steamed rice, no meat. Vietnam is known for having some of the most beautiful caves in the world. The one cave that I'd come for, Son Dong, has had less visitors than the peak of Mount Everest. We didn't realize that the tour cost over $3,000, so we decided to save that for another trip. Instead, we decided to do a day trip. We didn't have the highest expectations, but we were blown away. The guide paddled us through these beautiful caves. It was almost impossible to believe that the cave had been built from these drips of water over millions of years. On the way out of town, we visited the duck stop. It was Julia's highlight of the trip. It was the hardest I've laughed in a long time. We knew we were getting close to Hanoi when we drove into this huge blanket of smog. Some of the people we met in Hanoi said they had never seen a real sunset. We arrived in Hanoi on New Year's Eve. Almost all the hotels were booked, but we happened to find this one little spot right in the middle of the party. It's one of the most epic, insane New Year's parties we've ever been to. The streets were a solid block of human traffic. It took an hour to fight our way down each block. The celebration we had been told to go to was barricaded off by police with tasers. We were about to give up, but then the crowd surged and tore down the barricade, pushing over the police. It was pretty epic. We set off from Hanoi to see supposedly the most beautiful area of Vietnam, 
Halong Bay. We were told that the roads are pretty dangerous, but we'd just driven the entire length of the coast, so we didn't think it would be that bad. It had just started to rain, and a guy swerved in front of us. I slammed on the brakes and the bike slid down the highway. Luckily, we went off the side of the road and not underneath a semi-truck. We were rattled, but we were fortunate to walk away with only minor cuts. The bike was in a pretty bad state after that. It wouldn't even change gears, so we took it to a mechanic, and he rebuilt the entire engine for just $5. When we arrived in Holong Bay, we took three days rest and just played with the locals. But then we discovered that the iconic photo spot we had come for had recently been blocked off. They built a huge wall in front of the path, and the top of the mountain had been coated with motor oil to keep the tourists away. Our last adventure on the trip would be going to the majestic Bon Gok Waterfalls on the border of China. The road up north was the most beautiful road I've ever driven on. It was in a valley surrounded by massive mountains covered in mist. On our second day of driving, our phone ran out of service and we accidentally drove to China. The only way we could tell it was China was because the flags started changing. We pulled over and immediately an armed guard told us to turn back. Bangkok was stunning. We spent the entire day at this one waterfall, and for the most part, we had it completely to ourselves. Vietnam blew past our expectations, but I wouldn't recommend the ride to anyone who values their life or is not extremely experienced on a motorcycle. Besides being the cheapest place we have ever been, Vietnam was packed with adventure. I would definitely recommend you check it out.